For how long were Boko Haram's abduction of Chibok girls in April 2014 and perceived mishandling of the rescue effort being an albatross around the neck of the People's Democratic Party and the government of former President Goodluck Jonathan? And to what extent has that political party played its expected role as the opposition an effective watchdog on behalf of the Nigerian people under this dispensation? Well, joining us now from our Rise Abuja studio for a discussion of this and indeed other issues that may be of national relevance is Kola Ologmodinho, National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Welcome to the program. Kola Ologmodinho, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much. Good morning, Dr. Ruben Abati. Good morning to Duna. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, Nigerians. Yes. Morning. Uh, well, before we get to the other issues, you were quoted uh, as having said that uh, following the Congresses, the party Congresses in the uh, Northeast and the uh, Northwest, that this is an indication that the PDP is united, that the PDP is ready uh, for the general elections in 2023. Are you really in a position to say that? Is the PDP actually ready, uh, considering how troubled, for example, the party is in, is, is in the southwest, particularly in your state, and when you consider the ongoing feud, uh, quarrel, uh, between uh, one of the party's uh, leading members, former governor uh, Fayoshi, and the governor of uh, your state, uh, Sheyi Makinde, who was described by Fayoshi as a baby governor in the course of the conflict between them. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abati. I can say clearly that our party is ready, is prepared, and is already driving towards winning the 2023 election. I say so because, well, you have pointed out that in one zone out of six that we are having contestation for power that is leading towards disagreements, which is already being reconciled by the National Reconciliation and Strategic Committee led by Senator Bukola Saraki. But having said that, our party is the hope of Nigerians as we speak today. You kicked off by addressing the issue of kidnapping, banditry, terror, acts of terrorism, and what have you, which has today subsumed our nation. And even pointing out or bringing up that discussion, it shows clearly that Nigerians are already thinking about who will rescue our nation from these oddities and from this misrule of a governance. So as a result of that, the People's Democratic Party is prepared and ready to take over the mantle of leadership through the ballot box. You don't want to comment on that issue that's going on in the Southwest. What about a general comment on the larger reconciliation committee being headed by the former Senate president, Bukola Saraki? Is all well within the PDP now, as far as you can confirm? Well, well to know, I did say that out of six zones, there are issues of contestation for power leading to disagreements in one out of six zones. And that we are already aware, and Nigerians are aware, that the party has constituted a committee led by former president of the Senate, Senator Bukola Saraki, who is already addressing issues. Last night, he was in a meeting with some leaders, with the leaders in Ogun State on how to reconcile the Southwest. And I know that he has also intervened in the Kitty State. And I know that at various levels of our party, interventions are being held between former Governor Ayofayo Oshie and Governor Mackindy. And as a result, it is our belief in our party that all this will be put to rest. But what is, what is interesting, or more interesting, is the fact that we held zonal congresses in the Northeast and in the Southeast. It was peaceful. It was united. There were no killings. There were no deaths. There were no violence. As our neighbors would have had their, if they are having Congress, as it would have been witnessed. So that's why we say that we are ready as a party to take over the mantle of power. Two things. Uh, you've not been able to hold a Congress in the Southwest. In fact, your Congress was postponed. And Governor Yofayashi was on this platform a couple of days back, and he said, you know, I have a faction of my own, but I'll, lead, I'll leave the reconciliatory team to do their work. So uh, that means factions are beginning to emerge. 
That means a fragmentation. And you keep saying Nigeria needs us now. To come and do what, at particularly? You know, what, have, what are you going to do differently you know, that has not been done on ground? A lot of people argue with you that it was during the PDP administration that all of this we are saying happened in the country started, you know, Chibok girls and the likes and all of that. So what particularly? And that's the accusation against the PDP, that you don't really put solutions to the table. The well, present on in Nigeria, if you come. Well, well, Rufai, if you if we talk about Chibo guests, how many guests are we going to talk about under this administration? Have we not have Kankara? Have you, oh, I'm, I'm, how many? Do, uh, uh, Jangebi, how many are we going to talk about? But well, we are no longer ready because it is clear to every Nigerian that the APC as a political party has failed woefully. And if you bring us back to the issue of Chiboges, yes, we had insurgency. But I have argued consistently, and nobody has been able to knock out that argument, that prior to 2015 election, that insurgency has been fought to the fringes of the Northeast. And that was how elections were held in all the local, 774 local governments in Nigeria. There was no local government in the Southeast, that election did not hold because under the good luck Jonathan presidency, insurgency had been fought to the fringes. But what we have today, banditry, acts of terrorism, terrorists and insurgents are no longer going for soft targets. They are going for military formation. Under a, the leadership of a general, they are promised to fight from the front. So for us in the People's Democratic Party, you will recall that we brought in mercenaries. We Zulum, the governor of Boronu State, is, also, is already conversing for. However, when this government got into office, they chased away those mercenaries. You will recall that we also had a carrot and stick approach. Under President Goodluck Jonathan, we were building schools for itinerant traders. We were building schools for, 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 for people who, who, who were not resident in the larger society, as we put it. What, are, what is the approach? So what we are saying is very simple. Nigerians have carried water, like we say in my own local balance, and they have also lifted the oil. They can see the one that is heavier. And as such, the People's Democratic Party has come back to say, look, yes, we, made some, we agreed we made some mistakes, but we did not bring Nigeria to her knees the way the APC and President Muhammad Buhari has done. And as a result of that, we believe that on a return, we will grow the economy the way we grew it prior to 2015, before we were voted out of office. We will take charge strongly more than we ever did prior to 2015 about the issue of insurgency. And as you know, it is only the People's Democratic Party that have an understanding, a perfect understanding of the nuances of our nation of the divisions and how to unite these divisions and bring it out as a healthy uh, agreement among all forms and all shades of Nigerians. And as a result of that, the, people, the Nigerian people believe today and they know it today that it's only the people of the Democratic Party that can come to rescue. Well, uh, <clears throat> Kola, we have seen uh, the uh, All Progressives Congress, APC, conducting the registration, the revalidation of uh, membership for its party. In January, uh, the National Working Committee of the PDP promised uh, that before April, uh, the party will also have its own, uh, you know, uh, membership register updated and membership revalidated. This is March. Uh, when is that going to happen? And secondly, is it true that the uh, PDP <clears throat> has set up a committee to consider the option of zoning or open choice of a presidential candidate uh, for 2023. Uh, you must have seen some of the stories indicating uh, that the PDP is, in fact, thinking of zoning the presidency in 2023 to the north. Is that true? Thank you very much. Uh, on the issue of e-registration, you will recall that the last time I was on this program, I did say that not until or either this program or, an, or another program, I did say that not until the People's Democratic Party got the approval of NEC 
to conduct e-registration of its members. That was when our neighbors jumped out and said they were doing revalidation and re-registration or whatever name they called it, which has even been condemned in totality by their own leaders. But having said that, sir, it is imperative to state that our party, we have an organized and structured way of doing our things, of organizing ourselves. And it is clear that as we speak today, the major thing that is happening in the People's Democratic Party is reconciliation and deploying appropriate strategies that will strengthen the party. So we have, for that purpose, to have to allow the reconciliation exercise that's ongoing to be completed or to be near completion before we kickstart our e-registration. But it's also important to let you know, and through you let Nigerians know, that registration in the people member, of membership in the People's Democratic Party is a daily occurrence. As we speak, John Nwoye, who was the candidate of the APC in the, Anambra election, in the last Anambra election, has just come back to the People's Democratic Party. He's just gone to his ward to register as a member of the People's Democratic Party. So for us in the People's Democratic Party, membership of our party is a continuous exercise. But it's also imperative to state that what we are working on as a party is it what we are working on in our party is a, is a transfer of our membership to e-registration, to an online platform. Such a way that we can have the manual membership registration and have the uh, online or e-registration membership. But we'll bring out the details when we get there. You saw Dr. Abati raised the issue of zoning. I've said it for the umpteen time that zoning in the People's Democratic Party is dependent on variables and the narratives. So for us in the People's Democratic Party, we have not reached the point of zoning. We have not set up any committee on zoning. We are allowing for debates, for discussions, for narratives, for what the opinions of Nigerians on direction. We are not the, we are not the All Progressives Congress, which has done eight years in one zone, and they are thinking of reneging on their promises. That's not People's Democratic Party. For us in the People's Democratic Party, by the time we arrive at our destination, on zoning. It will be clear to Nigerians. However, everything that they are reading in the media is not the same way that we in the People's Democratic Party are reading it. But they don't bother us because they constitute part of the narratives that will come to play roles in deciding where. Hello? Hello? Yes, I'm with you. Okay. Because yes. I thought I lost uh, audio connection there. Well, I mean, you, you say it's the same way you read it in the media, but one of the reports was quoting Diron Deyemi uh, saying that uh, a committee had been set up to consider the issue of uh, zoning or open choice uh, within the PDP. But we'll go on a short break now. Please stay with us, Kola Logondino, National Publicity Secretary, PDP. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still with Kola Ologwadeo, National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Now, sir, before we went on the break, you were talking about the, well, you haven't quite decided on zoning. <laughs> yes, that, that, that's the official line. So I wanted to talk to you about another kind of zoning. We just had a conversation with somebody from the APC about affirmative action for women, a policy that PDP also has, in theory at least. And now as forms go on sale on March 10th, which is tomorrow for the Anambra elections, I have to ask you, at some point, will the PDP have female-only primaries? So, Regardless, whoever will emerge will be a woman at some point in, in time because we don't have enough female representation. I'm sure you agree. So that's the first question. The second question is that, unfortunately, we, we do see the plethora of cases, court cases, that fly around after primaries. What lessons have been learned so that the Anambra story will not go the way of previous other primary elections? Before I go into your question, let me quickly do a clarification of the last, of the last remark by Dr. Ruben Abati uh, on the issue of zoning. 
Uh, he, was, he quoted Diron uh, Odeemi as saying that a committee has been constituted. I believe that it's either uh, uh, Diron's remark to the reporters were misconstrued or he was misrepresented. I can say with every sense of responsibility that the last meeting of the National Working Committee had last week Thursday. And for this week, the meeting for this week will start today by 12 noon. Between last Thursday and 12 noon today, no meeting of the NWC has held. And I'm aware, and I say with every sense of responsibility, that the issue of zoning has not come before the party. So I want to rest that. Going to the issue of affirmative and uh, affirmative action for the women. Uh, to do, in case we are not aware, like, but I remember I did say it uh, uh, some times ago, that the People's Democratic Party operates a system which allows women to participate in our process. For instance, in the Anambra election that you just mentioned, the, the cost for expression of interest form is one million naira. The cost for nomination is 20 million. In our own party, unlike our neighbors, female members of our party only pay for expression of interest. So in this circumstance of Anambra State, which is where we are going to, which is our next port of call, you discover that a woman who is in the race will pay only for expression of interest, one million. A man who is in the race will pay both expression of interest, one million, and nomination form fee, 20 million. So where a woman is paying, a man is paying 21 million, a woman is paying one million. I think that is the best of encouragement that we can give for women participation. And you must also note that in the past, when PDP was in administration, was in, in, our, in charge of affairs of our nation, we, we ensure 35% affirmative action. And though you may say that, oh, we didn't attain it fully, but can it compare to what we have under the current situation, where women are said to be fit only for the other place? You can't compare. So for us in the People's Democratic Party, we have always encouraged the participation of women in our democratic process. On the plethora of court cases, and whether we we'll witness that in Anambra State, I normally, I normally if, you look, if you take critical examples of the leadership under the current uh, uh, Prince Richard Secondus, you will discover that our primary election are done very, very clinically. In such that whoever loses at the primary is bound to accept the result of the election because the conduct of the affairs of the primary is very clear. It is free. It is fair. And we have said it in our party, particularly in the NWC, that the 2018 National Convention, where, where former Vice President Atiku Abubakar emerged as a candidate, that the cleanliness of it, the clearness of it, remains the benchmark of our internal elections. And we are even inviting INEC to copy from us because of the manner. And if you recall the last gubernatorial primary in the Kitty State, Senator Adeyeye, though he later, came, he later deserted the party, but before he left, you recall he admitted that the primary was free, fair, and credible. That is the process that we are taking to an Anambra State. And I can assure you that anybody who will win the primary, those who will lose will accept the result because there will be no manipulation. I asked a question earlier on, and I'll ask it again. What new solution are you providing, or is your party providing, as regards the challenges of insecurity? Because, like I said, we don't always put solutions on the table. So, as an opposition, I'll give you an instance. If you look at England, we have a new leader of the opposition party. The leader of the opposition party, Sakia Starmer, when he makes arguments against the government, he puts forward a line of thinking and solutions. In fact, the government sometimes borrow from those solutions. That's what I think opposition should be all about. Insecurity, solution. Let's hear. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Rufai. First and foremost, you can only talk to a government that listens. I don't think there's any engagement that the People's Democratic Party has done on issues in our country that is not back with possible solutions. None. But you're talking to a government 
a party that's akin to a deaf and dumb political party. Because they're going to take... When PDP was in government, we have inter-party relations officials, whether as ministers or as advisors. In the five or six years of this administration, going to six years of this administration, what have they taken upon all the suggestions that the PDP had made? Oh dear, you've not answered my question. We have two minutes to go. Solutions. Please. Listen, 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 Rufai. Listen, Rufai. You talk about insurgency, that what have we done? Have we not proposed the issue of missionary? Did they take it? Have we not proposed the issue of carrot and stick? Did they take it? Have we not proposed the issue of securing our institutions? Have they taken it? You are, you, are, you are in a system of administration that doesn't listen to the other side. So no matter what you say to them, it's deaf and dumb. They are not interested. They are all knowing, and that is why they are failing on a daily basis. Well, finally, just before we go, we have just about a minute. If you could comment on the expansion of polling units uh, by INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, and where the PDP stands at this moment with regard to that. You recall, you recall that when uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu was, was uh, uh, reappointed, we did, as a party, we did not oppose his reappointment opportunity to do what is right. And because the future of Nigeria will be resting on its arms. So for us, the People's Democratic Party, on the expansion of pooling units, we have said that we will monitor the conduct of the process of this expansion. We are, if you are a voter, you will know that already as we speak, we have pooling votes or voting, what is called voting centers, where you have a unit that is larger in number than the expected number and uh, that expected the uh, uh, voters, they are transferred to another voting center, which is not a polling unit. So if the if INEC on its own feels that, oh, we want to convert these voting units to polling units, recognized polling units, so they don't function under existing polling units, it's all well and good. However, like I said the last time, we will continue to follow and monitor the processes of INEC. Thank you very much, uh, Kola Logmodino, for joining us. Uh, thank you very much indeed.